Now, UKIP, UKIP won nearly 4 million votes at the general election, but it's hardly full of happy bunnies. Nigel Farage's reinstatement as UKIP leader, just days after resigning, uh, apparently, has triggered a week of insults and accusations, a bit like a civil war with Mr Farage's allies accusing UKIP's one MP, Douglas Carswell, of attempting to lead a coup against the leader. So what's the story behind UKIP's inner turmoil? Here's our jazz. This weekend, following days of bitter infighting within UKIP, in his Clacton constituency, the party's only MP is mulling their future direction, whilst facing accusations that he has long been undermining Nigel Farage, telling the Times the leader needs to take a break. I'm suggesting he takes a break as leader. I'm not, suggest, I'm not suggesting he takes a break from being leader. Clearly, the national executive has the authority. They're the ruling body. Um, it, 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 I'm told that they made a, a, a decision. I'm told it was a uh, procedurally correct decision. He, he is the leader. Uh, but I think uh, it's important that as leader he, he takes a break. And I think it's important that we work out how these complex questions are answered by a team. Um, no one person has uh, uh, all the answers. It's those answers to UKIP's future that many in the party are concerned with. After a week that saw Mr Farage's once close ally, Patrick O'Flynn, say the man he claims is his political hero has become snarling, thin-skinned and aggressive. And a former treasurer called for the leader to step aside. A number of people have told me hostilities have broken out post-election because of two key advisers, Raheem Kassam and Matt Richardson. These two formed what they described as the leader's body armour going into this election campaign. They did their job. They gave the leader advice. But alarm bells have been ringing for many others I've spoken to in the party who found their manner unhelpful, felt left out of influence they used to have with Mr Farage, and put squarely on the shoulders of these two a change in tone in Mr Farage's rhetoric that they say was potentially negative and unduly aggressive, particularly on immigration. Raheem Kassam, seen here on the left of screen, no longer works for UKIP. But he's clear the rows aren't about him, but about power. Well, I think what happened in the last 48 hours was an attempt uh, at the party leadership. I, I think it was nothing short of a coup. Um, and I hold uh, Douglas Carswell and Patrick O'Flynn uh, responsible for that uh, within uh, the UK Independence Party, um, uh, assisted, uh, funnily enough, uh, by the UKIP press office itself. Do you really think that Douglas Carswell, who was a Conservative MP in a safe Conservative seat with a 12,000 majority, who gave all that up to stand shoulder to shoulder with Nigel Farage, do you really think that, 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 that I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% pro UKIP and 100% wanting what's best for Nigel? Any credible party, any mature party that has just had uh, an election campaign that didn't achieve the results that it wanted, quite normally and quite naturally and quite sensibly reflects on what went wrong and quite sensibly asks if there are alternative ways of, of making sure that uh, we get what we want next time. You know, if the Liberal Democrats, for example, were suddenly to come onto your programme and say that they had decided that um, you know, all these key decisions had been taken and uh, you know, the national executive had appointed Nick Clegg as leader for the next three years and um, we were going to plough on. I think a lot of people would say, is that in the best interests of the Liberal Democrat Party? And I'm simply saying, is this in the best interests of UKIP? At the election, UKIP gained 3.8 million votes, came second in 120 seats. But now it faces a referendum on UK withdrawal from the EU. And some say comments like this from Mr Farage in the debates might not help. You can come into Britain from anywhere in the world and get diagnosed with HIV and get the retroviral drugs that cost up to £25,000 per year per patient. I know there are some horrible things happening in many parts of the world, but what we need to do is to put the National Health Service there for British people and families who in many cases have paid into this system for decades. I think there are an enormous number of people six months ago after the Rochester by-election, enormous number of people across the country who were prepared to take a serious look at, at UKIP. Perhaps some of the more strident language that we used meant that some of those people were were less inclined to vote UKIP when 
the general election came along. Now, rather than blaming this all on the, the media, I think sometimes what we need to do is to say, did we handle our messaging as best we could? You know, we need to be careful that we don't end up actually preventing from happening the very thing that we're supposed to be about. We're about getting this country outside the European Union. And we need to be very careful that we don't get distracted by all the, all the offers of short money, all the offers of um, being on telly, all the offers of this and that. We, we, we don't get distracted by all those arguments and find ourselves in a situation where our actions are making it harder for us to achieve the majority support for British withdrawal from the European Union. The party leader and his MP are united in both wanting victory in that referendum. Well spotted, Douglas. Well spotted. Getting there together might mean taking a break to avoid making a break. Joining me now, Roger Helmer, the leader of the UKIP delegation of MEPs in Brussels. Welcome to the programme. Thank you. Suzanne Evans said this morning on the BBC that all they want Nigel to do, Nigel Farage, mm. is to take a, a break. Two weeks would do, a two-week holiday. Are you seriously trying to maintain that this whole row is about whether or not Nigel Farage should have a two-week holiday? Uh, well, uh, what row? I mean, I think it's extraordinary the way the media have built up really some minor issues. We had some office politics in the London office. We had a couple of do, staffers who've gone. Do you want me to remind you what your campaign manager said about Nigel I know Farage? What, I know what Patrick O'Flynn said. So what O'Flynn was that going to do said. with I know, the media? I know what Patrick O'Flynn said. Uh, well, he said it in the Times, and I think the Times is probably the media. Um, <laughs> well, the, the Times made him do it. Is that you lying? Uh, no, no, not at all. Um, I agree that Patrick O'Flynn made some very unhelpful comments. He seems to have been rowing back mm -hmm. a bit from them recently. Uh, but we have an issue, as I say, with a couple of staffers who've gone and one MEP who made some unhelpful comments. Um, I read the paper today and I see the Labour Party is ripping itself apart. I simply yeah, do no, not see that within, U that within UKIP. Well, Mr Farage himself said it would not be credible for him to lead the party if he failed to win his seat. He failed to win the seat and he's still leader. Well, he promised to uh, resign if he failed to win the seat. He produced his letter of resignation and the NEC, which is elected by the party and represents the whole party, unanimously insisted uh, that he remain. Did he actually resign? Uh, he presented his letter of resignation. Have, now, you seen the, have you seen the letter? I have not, no. I wasn't at the NEC meeting where this took place. Are we sure that as a letter exists? Because I've never seen the text. Have you? Uh, I haven't, no. Even no. in the hated media, have they not been <laughs> able to re 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 they, they reprint have, this have, letter? You've not even Nigel, seen a reprint Nigel, of this resignation Nigel letter? Went to, no, I haven't. Nigel went to the NEC and resigned. I don't think there's any dispute about that. The NEC said, I'm sorry, Nigel, we cannot accept your resignation. Did he submit? a written letter of resignation. Well, I wasn't in the room when it happened, but the version that I have from members of the NEC to whom I have spoken, he presented his letter of resignation and it was rejected. He said on Friday there is one person agitating for a change and for a leadership election. Who is that? Well, you better ask him, not me. Um, certainly, Patrick... You, you haven't asked him who it is? You have no idea? Well, uh, I know what is going on. I do not know precisely what uh, Nigel was referring to when he said one person. I assume he was probably referring to uh, Patrick O'Flynn, uh, who made some very strident and, and uh, off-court No, remarks. because we, if it had been Patrick O'Flynn, we would have known that because he had gone public. Uh, many people have taken this that he was referring to Douglas Carswell. Well, we've just heard Douglas Carswell. Douglas Carswell has been very clear. I think Douglas is right that after an election, any party, all parties, should have an analysis of how the campaign went, should have a discussion of, of how the points were made, how the presentation of policy was made. There I agree. I think there are some points that, my, that, that Douglas is making uh, where I wouldn't agree with his analysis, but that's a different matter. Should you not have had a leadership election simply to clear the airwaves. We would have done had it not been for the party as represented by the NEC insisting to Nigel uh, that he remain. Surely the honourable thing would have been for Mr Farage to either kept to his promise not to stand or to say we should have a leadership election. Some people may not be happy. I am going to stand again but let's have that election. He'd probably win, wouldn't he? He certainly would. So but why not that is exactly what he expressed his intention of doing. It was exactly what he intended to do. The only reason he changed his mind was the insistence of the party 
Uh, Did... Overwhelming. I've sat in my office and I've, I've looked at the number of, of emails and texts and letters coming in from party members, activists, all across the country, across my East Midlands region, Doug... saying he must stay. Douglas Car Carswell rather questions whether the NEC either was right to or had the power to overrule that resignation. Uh, I haven't got a copy of the party constitution with me. Uh, all I know is the account of what happened at the time, which is that the NEC unanimously called uh, on Nigel to uh, withdraw his but, resignation. Uh, he thought about it carefully uh, for a short period in that meeting and then agreed to do what he was asked to do in the interests of the party, but also, I believe, of the country. We've spoken to a lot of people in UKIP uh, on both sides of this mm. argument. But well, there aren't many people on the other side of well, the argument, to be we honest. Seem, well, we've certainly spoken to a lot. Maybe all of them, but we've certainly spoken <laughs> no to a, a lot. And it seems that, that what this argument is really about is about Nigel Farage, and it's about tone and style. It's about whether you go for your core vote or whether you try to broaden it, whether you attack uh, immigrants coming in with HIV or the BBC mm -hmm. audience for being too left-wing, or, or reach out beyond that core vote. Uh, and that's what it's really about, particularly with the referendum coming mm. up. Well, where do of, you stand on that? One of the areas where I would disagree with Douglas uh, is his assertion that immigration is not important in the EU debate. Because we just had a general election. I've knocked on huge numbers of doors. And my experience and my colleagues' experience is that one of the biggest issues, perhaps the biggest issue, on the doorstep is immigration. And immigration is intimately linked to free movement within the well, European Union. You cannot separate them. So I think we're right to talk about immigration. I think it would be uh, a, a great negative for our campaign okay. in the referendum if we fail to point out that. these issues. But is Nigel Farage the right person to be leading mm. you into a referendum campaign? Mm. It, because uh, many Tory Eurosceptics, mm. people who are not that different from mm. your own point of view, and some in your own mm. party, think that he's a negative, think that he turns people off that you got four million votes, almost, that's great, but you need between 15 and 20 million to get your no vote, and he's not the man to do it. Well, if you cast your mind back a year, when Europe was the issue in the Euro election, in that election we got more votes than any other party. So I don't think you can judge this purely uh, on the basis of a Westminster election. Now, in terms of Nigel's particular skill set, um, I regard him, and many, many people inside and outside the party, regard him as the best communicator in British politics today. So he's the man to lead the what, out campaign? What, what, well, he leads, his job is to lead UKIP, and UKIP will play a major part in the out campaign. Even if he there, turns people off? Well, I don't think he does turn people off. On, I say on the he, out. he is an excellent communicator. Um, people admire Nigel because unlike so many politicians, he tells it like it is, he says what he believes, he's like Marmite, love him or hate him, but you know That's he's saying what he thinks. You need someone who's not a Marmite to reach out to all these no votes or, or yes to leave votes. You well, need someone you, who isn't what, Marmite. What you need is somebody who is absolutely clear and informed on the issues and is able to communicate those issues. There are people who don't like his style. I don't disagree with that for a moment. But okay. overall, he has been a fantastic leader and a very, very effective communicator. Okay. He is an asset that are you in glad, this circumstance Are you glad to see the without. back of these two Tea Party types who were so close to him? Uh, I wouldn't define them as Tea Party types, you know but I mean. there were two people who I believe contributed to making problems in terms of press briefings and so on. Uh, and yes, I think it was right that they should go. All right, Roger Helmer, thank you. My pleasure.